Hey guys, Angus here. Today we've got the video review of the ST Armament PPSH 41 Electric Blowback Airsoft AEG. Now before we get into the actual review, first thing I want to say is if you are interested in purchasing this gun, there will be a link down below in the description to airsoftstation.com where you can buy the PPSH for about $270. With that being said, let's get into the actual review and start off by talking about this gun's packaging. As you can see, this is obviously the box your gun will come in. It's very bare, not very flashy, just a plain cardboard box with a large sticker indicating this is indeed the PPSH. When you open the box, this is what you should see underneath a thin layer of black styrofoam. Everything's packaged rather tightly inside some thick black styrofoam. Really nothing's going to shift around in transit. Inside the box, you have your gun user's manual. This is a rather simple manual, however it does have some nice pictures and a couple concise statements, so I would recommend you read it. A 2000 round high capacity drum magazine. And of course, your s and PPSH AEG itself. Now out of the box, the first thing you guys are probably going to notice is that it does have a pretty nice heft to it. For those of you who are used to running your lighter M4s or more modern style airsoft weapons, this gun definitely is going to be a bit heftier. It weighs in around the 10 or 11 pound area, and the reason for that is because pretty much everything on this gun is constructed of metal. There are only two real pieces that aren't metal on the gun, those of course consisting of that bright old orange tip there. In case you're wondering, obviously the gun doesn't have any threads, the orange tip is just glued on. And obviously, your wood buttstock here is not metal. It is supposed to be real wood, and I'm not doubting them, but of course, it's not that nice real wood you get in the wood kits. It's more so that cheaper Chinese real wood. But it does look rather nice. It's got a nice dark coloring to it, a good texture, not bright and phony looking like some of the other plasticky woods I've handled in the past. So overall, rather nice wood buttstock on here. Nice texture, feels rather solid. Pretty much everything else in this weapon is constructed of metal. That includes your outer barrel, your heat shield here, your sling mounts, your iron sights, bolt, trigger, selector switch, magazine, etc. Everything else on the gun externally is metal. So it's definitely a solid gun externally. Everything's hooked on there rather tightly. It's built solid and built to last. It's nothing cheapy. Being the only real plastic piece is that orange tip. Now internally, last time I handled the s and gun, the internals were not too great. They were that plastic gearbox s and Tavor. This gun does have a metal gearbox, metal gears, etc, etc, the usual stuff. And internally it appears to be put together rather well. I haven't taken apart the gun yet, being that I really don't do that till the weapons break. However, overall I can tell you that just from looking at the gearbox, it appears to be rather solid and eh, decently well. The one thing I wouldn't recommend though is a high voltage battery, seeing as it is a blowback that could possibly strip your piston. But otherwise, the internals look pretty good, and the externals are certainly rather nice, especially with a few added trademarks, which I'll zoom in on for you now. I've opted to show you the uglier sort of trademark first, which is a painted-on bright white made in China located just above the magazine on the gun's right side. This is simply painted on rather bright white paint, but it's always ugly when they put that on there. However, you do also get some stamps located on the top of the heat shield there. As you can see, I believe that's the Star of the Red Army. I'm not exactly a Russian expert, but I'm assuming that's what it is. You also have 1944, as well as a 1 engraved there. So those trades look rather nice. Certainly a better relief than that ugly made in China on the right side of the gun. Now hopping directly into some features here of the PPSH, one of the things I like best about this gun is its battery space. This gun utilizes its full stock to house its battery and that's great. You got a big old battery compartment, can house a big old battery in there. Now in order to access your battery compartment, it's very simple. If you ever handled an Airsoft Thompson, it's basically the same mechanism. What you want to do is look at your gun's metal butt plate. And if this gun were in perfect condition, there would be a small sort of almost trap door here that you would flip open. That was the one cheapy external piece for me. I was in a game and it fell off. I'm not sure if that's just because it came dislodged or say a screw cracked or something, but the point is it did come off. To me, that's not a huge deal, being that the only way the gun's really going to get damaged due to that is say if I was holding it upward, some water got in there, soaked the battery or wires. But hey, it, it did come off. I wish it would have stayed on there. Anyway, you'd flip open that trap door, and then you would push upward like so, and spin the butt plate downward. At that point, your battery compartment is revealed, and it is fairly spacious. It's thin, but it's deep, so you can house a thinner, longer battery inside there. And even if it's a smaller battery, it's really not going to rattle too bad when you're on the move. Right now, I've got a 7.4 volt LiPo in there, which fits rather well and gives the gun a decent rate of fire. Overall, the battery space in this gun is rather nice because, hey, you can hold a larger battery, give yourself a little bit better of a rate of fire and a longer battery life. 
If you were closing up the battery space, simply reverse the process and spin it upward like so. Once the butt plate's locked into position, your battery should be in, ready to go, and you can go ahead and fire. All right, now as you guys saw earlier, this gun comes with a big old 2,000 round drum magazine. Now in order to eject your gun's mag, you want to push in on the magazine ejection piece right here, and it will slide out like so. It does take a little bit of getting worn in for it to slide out easily and get placed in easily. The first couple times you might notice you have to push a little bit to get it locked in there, but after a couple times it comes worn down and it's a lot easier to eject and reinsert your magazine. Now as I stated, it is a 2,000 round magazine. Unfortunately, it's not auto winding. If it was auto winding, that'd be pretty sweet, but unfortunately, it's just a big old high cap. You wind it at the bottom like any other high cap, and overall it feeds rather well. Just a couple winds and you'll be set to go. You'll have to wind it eh, a couple bursts later, but otherwise, feeds rather well. Now in order to fill up the magazine, it's not standard. There's no reservoir at the top. In order to fill up the magazine, the first thing you wanna do is turn this centerpiece counterclockwise. Once that is loose enough, this metal plate will come undone and you can pull off the entire portion of the front of your magazine there and reveal the magazine's re reservoir. Essentially here, what you're gonna do is just take handfuls of BBs or a bottle of BBs or a bag, whatever you're using, just dump 2,000 rounds in there. The magazine is incredibly easy to load, just like a standard Thompson drum mag, very easy to load. So there you go. Once that's open, what you'd essentially do is simply reverse the process, place on the top cover like so, make sure it is lined up, click this back into place, and then turn clockwise in order to lock the front of the magazine back into place. Overall, mag is very easy to load. Once you've gone ahead and loaded up your magazine, you can reinsert it into the gun by making sure that the piece you just unscrewed is facing towards the front of the weapon and slide it in like so, being careful to line up the grooved edges. Once you've done that, the magazine will clack and lock into place and you should be ready to fire. A couple things I gotta point out here. First off, the drum magazine is really loud and rattly when it's filled up even. So if you're one of those players who likes to be more stealthy, kind of hide in the distance, this gun, when you're moving with it, it's definitely going to rattle and definitely be a loud gun. There is a way of getting around that. There are high capacity stick magazines available for the gun. However, those are equally large and also are probably going to rattle as well. The only advantage to those is that they're a bit smaller and a lot easier to fit into pouches than a big old drum mag. But otherwise, the drum mag holds a lot of BBs and is very easy to load. Just a little bit rattly though. Moving onward, as for the gun's fire selector switch, it's probably a little bit different than what most of you are used to seeing. The PBSH's fire selector switch is located within its trigger guard, right in front of the gun's trigger. It's this small black piece right here. Now when that piece is pushed towards the front of the gun, as it is now, the weapon is on semi-auto. One BB will be fired each time you pull the trigger. If you were to flip the switch backward, like so, it will be on the full auto setting. On full auto, the gun has a pretty nice rate of fire of around 700 rounds per minute. Overall, the selector is pretty nice. It's very easy to move between the settings. The one thing I find annoying about it, though, is being that it's in such close proximity to the trigger, I tend to, when I'm shooting, move in to move the selector switch, and since the trigger feels the same, I accidentally end up pulling the trigger before I realize, hey, that's not the selector switch. i uh, got to move up a little bit. But otherwise, it's very easy to move, very nice, and it's actually rather convenient because being you really don't even have to take your finger off the trigger to change settings. Considering we're talking about fire modes, I might as well talk about an obvious feature of this gun. As you've obviously seen in the past couple clips of me shooting the gun, it is an electric blowback weapon. What that means is like a real weapon, the bolt comes back each time you pull the trigger. For this instance, on full auto, as you can see, now, obviously, it doesn't feel like a real gun whatsoever, not even close, but you do feel the blowback coming back. It's not a weak kick, not exactly a strong one, but you do feel it's there. It's a lot better than some of that cheapy blowback on some of the uh, EBB M4s out there. So overall, the blowback's rather nice, and the fire slacker switch, pretty easy to move. As for that bolt that's coming back each time with the gun's blowback, it does actually serve a purpose. Obviously, like on most other airsoft weapons, when you pull the bolt back like so, you will reveal your gun's hop-up unit. In this case, a rather large gear. Hop-up wise, I have to say the gun disappointed me. This hop-up really isn't that great. When you adjust it, even if you really take your time, it only adds a little bit of range to the gun already and the BBs tend to still drop. Also, occasionally a BB did roll out of the barrel and firing on full auto, so the hop-up isn't really that good on the s and PBSH. The bolt also is where your safety is located. If you were to pull it back all the way, it will feel like you're forcing it, but don't be afraid, you are just pulling it back into the position. 
you can lock it into place like so. Also, had you been firing your gun on full auto, that would decompress the spring, which is rather nice if you wanted to store this weapon. This is the ideal storing position. When you want to release the safety, simply push outward like so, and the bolt will come forward. Obviously, your PPSH does have iron sights, and that, that's great because obviously you're not going to be able to put a scope or an optic on here, seeing as though it is, you know, the way it is, and also it's a classic World War II gun. Why ruin it by trying to make it look tactical? Anyway, the iron sights in this gun are fairly nice. After all, they are what you're stuck with, as I just stated. The rear sight is adjustable. It does have two apertures. You can flip between them like so. However, there really isn't any difference between either aperture, so it really just comes down to which one you want to have, the front one or the rear one. The slit in that would line up with your front sight, which isn't adjustable. It's just a small front sight post covered in two rings, sort of like a target sight as I always call them. And overall, the iron sights are decent. They're accurate to the gun, and that's what really matters because, again, they are what you're stuck with in this case. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the final conclusion of the review for the ST Armament PPSH-41. Now overall, I found this to be a rather nice gun. Externally, it's built very, very solidly, has a great heft, great feel to it. Internals, they're a lot better than what I saw from ST last time, and you get some pretty cool features on this gun, such as the big old 2000 round drum mag, the electric blowback, the big battery compartment, some decent iron sights, etc. Overall, the couple things I found to complain about on this gun are kind of minimal. The main thing I didn't care for was the hop-up. The hop-up on this gun really doesn't impress me that much. It's kind of weak, really doesn't give you that much extra range, and the BBs always drop towards the end of it. Other things I found annoying, with the drum mag, kind of a con of the entire drum mag system, you do get really loud, rattly mags. So if you're someone who likes to be kind of stealthy, hanging in the back, not exactly the best gun for you, even if you do switch over to those stick mag high caps. I'm also a little disappointed the piece on the butt plate fell off. Not really a big con, but hey, it happened to me. Maybe it'll happen to you. Another thing I don't necessarily care for would be the Made in China painting on the side of it. Sure, that can come off, but when you get it out of the box, it does kind of look ugly. Otherwise, though, the gun is built rather nicely. And I'll be honest, it didn't quite live up to my expectations. I was expecting PPSH, going to be awesome. But this gun did have a couple things I didn't exactly care for. Mainly, I think it's a little bit overpriced. I'd price this more in the $220 to $230 range. But otherwise, it's a pretty nice gun. Would I recommend it if you're a World War II enthusiast who wants to put on all this different type of gear, be a World War II air softer, then yes. If you're someone looking to just go out there, own your friends if you want to, uh, maybe a more modern airsoft gun be a little bit better. But otherwise, this is a pretty cool gun. And with that being said, this has been Deathcore Airsoft's review of the ST Armament PPSH-41. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe.